Well, thank you, Peter, so much. It's great to be with you again. Uh, and thanks to everybody from uh, US GBC, uh, and congratulations on your 30th anniversary. I am really excited to be able to help kick things off here at Greenbuild. I know that a lot of our colleagues from around the government are going to be here this week. Uh, you're going to be hearing from our friends over at the White House, Ali Zaidi and Andrew Mayock is here, and lots of other folks that are leading the charge in the federal government when it comes to investing in America and our clean energy future. Now, before I get started, I'd like to do a quick show of hands. So I want to know who's in the room. So quickly, uh, anybody who is a Fed, can you raise your hand? All right. How about GSAers? How about let's just see? All right. Look at that in the house. All right. State and local government folks. Anybody here? Okay. Fantastic. How about folks from NGOs and academia? Great. And private sector partners. All right. Well, look, I am very happy to see such a diverse crowd and better yet, just to know how aligned we are on and how closely we're working together really to meet the urgency of this moment because it really is about what we're going to do for our economy to build that, make it stronger for our national security, and certainly for the health of our planet. Um, I will tell you that because there is just no doubt that the challenges and the opportunities of moving toward this clean energy economy are going to take all of us working together. But the good news is that collaboration is already happening. It's happening everywhere. You know, I was at Greenbuild last year in San Francisco, and it was, if you recall, just a couple of months after the president signed the Inflation Reduction Act, you know, the biggest investment in sustainability and combating climate change in the history of our country. There was this buzz of excitement, right? There was just a lot of energy. There were demos going on everywhere of new innovative things. And, but there was one group in all of that that stuck out that I will never forget. And it was a group of young girls. And they were there to tell me about the importance of using low embodied carbon building materials, especially concrete. Turns out, I don't know if any of y'all saw them, but it turns out there were two Girl Scout troops from Madison, Wisconsin. And they were there to do their part to combat climate change. And teach everybody that they could about why this was so important. They made videos. They talked to everybody who walked by. And they wore these hats that said, ask me about low embodied carbon, <laughs> which I absolutely love. They gave me one. I wear it all the time. I was struck by the fact that they had such passion, but also that they had such knowledge. And it was just a reminder that these little girls were the living reminders of why this work matters so much, and it's why we're all here. Now, the good news is that the president gets it. He's laid out these ambitious goals, as you know, to invest in America, to reduce emissions, to rebuild our economy, to rebuild the middle class, and thanks to the Inflation Reduction Act and, and the bipartisan infrastructure law, we have got money and momentum at the same time to actually get this done, and that is worthy of that. Now, we've got a lot of folks in the room who know that the federal government is the bigger, biggest buyer of goods and services in the world. What's that mean for this? It means that we can use that buying power to really change how markets operate. We can use it to spur demand for low embodied carbon building materials and carbon free electricity and energy efficiency and clean technologies. And that is exactly what we're doing. We're doing it all across the country, and that's what I want to talk a little bit about today. You see, GS, GSA has got a big role to play in all of this uh, because we manage the, the country's largest commercial real estate portfolio. Our goal is to transition all of that portfolio to net zero emissions by 2045. We're also, along with the Defense Department, the biggest buyer of power. Goal there? transition to carbon-free electricity in all of our federal buildings by 2030. That's just seven years from now. We also manage one of the biggest fleets of vehicles in the country, over 240,000 vehicles, and our goal is to transition those to EVs as well. Um, and finally, we're also the buyer of over $80 billion worth of goods and services every year. And our goal is to lead by example and leverage the buying power to create demand 
and in new, new markets. Use those opportunities to really do what we can to buy clean. Now, for those of you who've worked in this space for a while, uh, you will not be surprised to hear that GSA is leading by example. That's what we want to do. Because it was 24 years ago that GSA was the first government entity to adopt the LEED certification system. Since then, you all know that that has become the global standard for measuring building sustainability and performance. And to me, it is just a terrific example of the kind of progress that can happen when the government and private sector team up together to conquer big issues. So I want to talk about ways that right now, this year, what we've been doing, how GSA is buying clean. Our, our money for this falls into three buckets. The first is just over $2 billion for low embodied carbon building materials. We want to use those to modernize our facilities all across the country. Second bucket, just under a billion dollars to support emerging and sustainable technologies like those in our green proving ground. And then the third bucket is about $250 million to do to convert our facilities into high performance green buildings. So we have got a fantastic team of experts. You saw them raise their hands. You probably know a lot of them already. And they're working hard to make sure we are investing in ways that are smart and strategic and really drive the biggest impact possible. So we know a lot. We've learned a lot. We know what works. We know what doesn't work. And we're really eager to share those learnings across government with our partners and with our friends in the private sector. Uh, we know that this kind of collaboration is the only way we're going to succeed. So let me just talk a little bit about what we've been up to for the past year. And hopefully, y'all will find a few of these things useful and interesting. Now, first, how many of you all are thinking as agencies about getting electric vehicles or charging stations? Let's see hands. Anybody? OK. All right. We're thinking about that, too. Um, this, this fiscal year, we've already bought 5,300 EVs. So we know a little bit about what's going on. That's about 20% of our light duty orders. Now, our goal is to, as I said, transition all of those light duty vehicles to uh, ZEVs by 2027 and 100% of the fleet by 2035. But that's all fine and good. We've got to wait for the market to catch up for some of this. But we also have got to have charging infrastructure, obviously, to be able to get that done. And so the good news is that the federal government recently hit a big milestone with 10,000 charging stations that are in federal use right now. So uh, that's a useful thing. So we've been through this a few times. So my message to you today is that other agencies can buy off of GSA schedules. We can help you buy these things. We can vet these products. We can test them. We can ensure that they meet security standards and they can easily integrate into the grid. What that means for government partners is that they don't have to do all those things. They can more quickly get access to both the EVs and the charging infrastructure. So let us know. We've got these contracts in place, and we are happy to help you streamline the process uh, and speed it up as you want to buy those as well. OK, for our industry partners in that space, I just want to say thank you. Uh, we intend to keep spotlighting your project products and offerings. And don't forget to come back to Washington for the Fed Fleet event in January. Uh, that's around the time of the DC Auto Show, and it's a great opportunity for us to be able to continue collaborating uh, when it comes to EVs. All right, next. For those of you who are looking to minimize your carbon footprint in construction projects, that's probably a few people in the room, we have got lots of interesting things to share. We'll tell you that. A couple of months ago, uh, GSA launched a low embodied carbon uh, pilot project. Some of you might know about this. We partnered with EPA and the Department of Transportation to draft new requirements for buying LEC materials uh, using IRA funds. The idea is we want to get feedback from manufacturers, suppliers, small businesses, labor groups, environmental groups, and really see what's working. Our plan, what we want to do is to use the results of the pilot project to then inform how we spend the rest of this $2 billion on low embodied carbon building materials. Um, it's a big deal as we renovate our buildings uh, all across the country. And I will tell you that uh, just like those Girl Scouts out in, out in uh, Ma Madison, Wisconsin, we all know that there is a big impact if we can reduce 
the embodied carbon in the building materials, whether it's raw materials to production to transportation. It's got an enormous impact. So stay tuned for more on that because we're going to be talking about uh, the availability of these materials in regional markets all around the country. For government partners in particular, I would encourage you to just draft off what we're doing. This is a lot of work. Uh, you don't have to reinvent the wheel on this stuff. And so our team can use those, you can use those learnings and we'd be happy to sort of get your feedback about them as well. The next thing I wanted to mention is for those of you who are looking to deploy emerging and sustainable technologies and products in your projects, we have got a lot going on. So I mentioned that second bucket of money, nearly a billion dollars in IRA funding is the idea is we wanted to help catalyze these new and innovative products and materials and we're doing some of that uh, through a program that we call the Green Proving Ground and it's where we partner with DOE to test technologies in federal facilities and when we identify something that works well we figure out how to scale that in our facilities across the country. So this program is fantastic for business, helps them commercialize new products. It's also great for the government because it provides access to products and services that reduce energy costs, reduce emissions, and make our buildings healthier and more efficient. So great news is with IRA funding, we've been able to expand that to $30 million and go from four, or four and five projects and companies a year up to 20. So here's what I want you to know. Opening for that a new tranche of this comes in October. So please, if you know any American companies, American-made products that are innovative, that can help our federal facilities, encourage them to apply. It's opening in October. They can be in the next tranche uh, of our green proving ground companies. Now, I've just ticked off a whole bunch of stuff. EVs, sustainable building materials, emerging technologies are all really important. But let's talk on a broader scale for just a minute. For folks who want to stretch your money even further, we're doing a lot when it comes to energy performance contracts and public-private partnerships to do just that. So I want to focus on that for just a little bit today. We found that leveraging private sector funding through these EP ESPCs really is a great way to just stretch our money further. We've got about a billion dollars of investment of IRA money and to electrify buildings and to expand the use of these ESPCs. But we expect to be able to leverage that one billion to be 1.9 billion with the private sector money. And that, with that, we're gonna be having 28 new net zero buildings, which is fantastic. We're gonna have 100 new all electric buildings, which we're super proud of. And that's gonna grow our portfolio by over 130 million square feet of sustainable buildings, supporting 5,000 jobs a year, putting $2.4 billion back into the, the economy, and saving almost half a billion dollars in energy costs over the next couple of decades. So we're very, very excited about this. And listen to this, as part of it, we are electrifying one of the biggest buildings in Washington, D.C. It's the Ronald Reagan building just right down the street. And it's over 3 million square feet, and we're gonna make it all electric. The way we're doing that is we're partnering with Johnson Controls. We put in about $13.5 million of IRA money. They put in over $90 million of private financing. And so that's, if you think about it, it's pretty, pretty good leverage. It's eight to one, public money to private money. We like that use of taxpayer money. And the idea was to do a deep energy retrofit to reduce the energy consumption first. We're reducing it by about 40% straight up. And that over time, that, that's the equivalent. If you think about the reduction in this one building, it's the equivalent of 300,000 households. That's what we're saving in that one building. The annual energy cost savings of over $6 million and avoiding 2.3 million metric tons of greenhouse gas emissions. I call that an absolute win. But there are tons of opportunities like this around the country. We want more of these wins. We'd like to talk to you and your communities about how we can do the same thing. I'd encourage you, because we've got lots of materials about this, to look and learn more about GSA's National Deep Energy Retrofit Program. 
um, and the White House Climate Smart Building Initiative. Those are two really good resources uh, that are worth taking a look at if you haven't. I'd also say there's another terrific resource. I send this around, around to people all the time, and it's uh, the GSA Sustainable Facilities website. So you should write this one down. It's, it's called sftool.gov. And if you take a look at that, there is no doubt that you're going to find some uh, things that you can use in your communities to figure out how to have uh, better strategies around this and my favorite topic, procurement tips on how to get this done better and faster. So I know that uh, the GSA team is going to be at our booth, 1522, uh, so stop by there and they're going to do some demos of this tool over the next uh, course of, of this uh, conference over at, uh, at the exhibit hall, so stop by for a visit. For folks who are looking for ways to both make your buildings uh, more efficient and your grid more resilient, we've got some really, really interesting examples we'd like to share with you. Uh, one in particular I visited a few months ago was in Oklahoma City. If you ever get a chance to go down and see the Oklahoma City Federal Building, you should do that. We teamed up with Amoresco, the Rocky Mountain Institute, and the Department of Energy, as well as Oklahoma Gas and Electric to do this. And here's how it worked. It was a relatively small federal investment. It was about $11 million. We were able to team up, again, one of these public-private partnerships, to transform this entire building into a grid, interactive, efficient building. How many of y'all have heard of those before? Yeah, okay, this is a smart audience. Okay, so we don't have all that many at GSA, but this one is really, really interesting. And obviously, as a first step, we did a deep energy retrofit. It's always the first step. And then we added a huge rooftop solar array on top of that. And then we coupled that with big on-site battery storage, connected all of that to the local grid. And now Oklahoma Gas and Electric can tap into that battery power when they need it to do load balancing. It's an absolutely terrific example of how a community can have a stronger and more resilient grid and we can cut costs uh, for taxpayers and emissions. Uh, this is the kind of example that we want to replicate around the country. It's a model for clean energy innovation and efficiency uh, everywhere. So just on that, just a few statistics on that project, we expect it to be over 40% less energy use, 31 100 metric tons less of emissions and $400,000 in annual savings for taxpayers in both lower energy and water costs. So absolute win across the board. We really think it's a model for sustainable buildings. So come by the federal booth. We'll talk to you about it. We've got all the, all the stuff about these interactive grid interactive buildings that we can provide to you in case studies. So you can go home and do the same thing uh, in your communities. Okay. One last example I just want to talk about and mention, and that is anybody here interested in buying more carbon-free electricity? Come on, everybody stand out and go off for this. <laughs> so as I mentioned at the outset, the president has set some really ambitious goals about this. Um, he wants all our federal facilities to be powered by carbon-free electricity uh, by 2030, seven years from now. Uh, I will tell you that last year we entered into MOUs with three different utility companies uh, covering seven states to do just this. Uh, the first was with Entergy Arkansas, and it was a really interesting collaboration where we teamed up to create what I think was the world's first 24-7 electricity utility tariff. Now, let me tell you why this is a big deal. Um, not only does it provide federal agencies with regionally sourced, and that includes nuclear, solar, hydro, wind, uh, uh, carbon-free electricity, it's cost competitive, it's reliable, and it matches to our demand with the CFE on that grid. The really good news is it's not just for federal buyers, it's for any company that wants to buy green carbon-free electricity. Uh, that meets their 24-7 needs. It's great for economic development. The state's out there promoting this and companies want it. Uh, it's great for job creation and obviously it's great for combating climate change. So if you want to learn more about how we did that or partner up with us in doing this in other parts of the country, um, please reach out. There's also a terrific uh, Department of Energy database 
uh, that is searchable. It can help you identify CFE options in, in your communities. Last thing I want to mention is environmental justice and job creation. They're obviously really, really high priorities for the Biden administration and in every single community around the country. And that's why we've teamed up with the CEQ uh, to develop the climate economic justice screening tool and with the uh, Department of Labor on a good, jo good jobs initiative. Both of those are helping create pathways to high paying quality jobs in construction and maintenance and manufacturing and in operations. So this is a big deal. I hope you can partner with us as well. So just so I want to kind of wrap up here. Um, I've covered a lot of ground today. I know that. It was intentional. I want you to leave here and say, wow, the scope and the scale and the speed with which GSA and the federal government is moving is incredible. It's unprecedented. I have been in and out of government my whole life, and I have never seen this kind of alignment and urgency around an issue ever before. But I will tell you that it's not time to celebrate, because what we talk about and celebrate in these rooms in Washington aren't success. We know that success comes when clean energy is on our, in our buildings, when the shovels are in the ground, when homegrown technology is in our buildings and jobs are in our communities. So meeting this moment is going to take all of us working together to find ways to catalyze the, these markets in every state, in every community, collaborating with business and with government. It's going to take all Americans to get this done. Now, there is no doubt that we are stronger when we partner together. We share ideas, skills, and expertise, and there is really no reason at all, and there's no time to reinvent the wheel. That's why it's so important we, we partner. And so I would ask you today to look to your right, look to your left, know that your next partner is probably right next to you. Figure out a time to meet people you don't know. Figure out a time to talk to them about how we can collaborate together. Because whatever else you do in all of this, that's what this week is really about. And I hope you will stop by the federal booth, learn what we've done, learn what we've done right, what we've done wrong, how you can repl replicate these things, and how we can keep working together. And for anybody who is looking to have a big impact, I would encourage you to think about, if you're not already in the government, come work for the government. There has never been a time to make as big an impact as right now. So as we close up, I will say that since last year, I have had on my a screensaver on my telephone a picture of those Girl Scouts. It is a daily reminder of why this is so important and the urgency of this work, the urgency of focusing on creating good jobs that drive and boost our economy, they strengthen our national security, the urgency of saving taxpayer money by cutting these utility costs, and the urgency of ensuring our planet is healthy today and for our kids. There is no time to waste. So thank you all very much for being here and for your partnership.